Hi, I'm Jamie with Team of Freight Lines. Let's talk ELDs. What is an ELD? ELD is an electronic logging device. It is a mobile comm, and our choice of mobile comm here at Team of Freight Lines is PeopleNet. The mobile comm allows you to do four critical things to allow us to perform at the highest level of service. Number one, it allows you to manage your hours of service on your e-driver log. Number two, it's a source of communication so that you can communicate back and forth with your driver manager, get load information, and respond in a timely fashion. Number three, it's connected directly to the diagnostic port of the truck, allowing us to get key performance metrics on truck utilization and performance. Fourthly and finally, it allows us to send four messages to timestamp when we've arrived and are loaded from a customer or a shipper, and when we've arrived and delivered or emptied a load to the destination. That allows us to keep our service intact and good communication flowing through our important customers. Let's take a look at the tablet. Anytime you're going to work with your ELD, you want to make sure that your key is in the on position. So let's go ahead and turn that over one. And here is the ELD itself. There are actually two different tablet types in our fleet. This one here is a PeopleNet product called the PD5. To the right is the other tablet style you'll find, which is a Samsung tablet. The only difference between the two devices is the button orientation, but the software load on it functions and performs the same. Let's start by looking at the PD5. On the PD5, you've got three buttons across the bottom, four buttons across the right edge, and a touchscreen interactive display. The buttons are as follows. The triangle is a retreat to the previous screen button or will collapse your keyboard. The circle button returns to the home screen. The square button opens multiple apps so you can toggle which one you want to be currently working in. On the right edge, you have four additional buttons. This button toggles the screen on and off. This button also can be depressed for a few additional seconds until this dialog box appears, giving the option to power off the device or restart. The next button down has the home button icon on it, so that will navigate back to the home screen. You also have a plus and a minus volume control to make it louder or quieter as you see fit. On the Samsung tablet, you'll notice there's no buttons across the bottom. There are only three buttons on the right edge. They are the th same three buttons you would have found on the other display, only flipped this way. This is your retreat or collapse keyboard button. The middle button is your home button. And the bottom button is your open multiple apps to select which app you want to currently be working in. Your volume controls are on the top of the display, up and down, and your toggle on off or restart button is next to that. For the rest of this training video, we'll use the PD5. Let's go ahead and log in. If your screen is dark, go ahead and tap the top right button for your login prompt. To log in, simply tap the field you want to enter. I'll tap the top field to enter my driver ID. Make sure it's case sensitive. You can tap the shift key once or press and hold it to lock it in. Next field, enter your password. At any point, if you were to cancel or retreat to the previous screen, it will abort logging in. In order to advance, I need to choose my duty status. Here are my options. On duty is the driver, on duty is not the driver, sleeper berth, or off duty. Let's say I'm starting my shift, so I want to be on duty as the driver. If any of the following predefined annotations apply, I want to flag it in my log. If none of them apply, I can hit the skip button. But right now, since I'm starting my duty shift, I'm going to be doing a pre-trip inspection, so it would be appropriate to tap that for my predefined annotation. Lastly, it's inviting me to manage shipments. If I have a load, I want to make sure it's showing in my ELD. What I would need to do is tap the Enter Shipment ID field and enter my seven-digit Chima load number. Once I hit Next, it will advance me to the home screen. Anytime you want to add a second seat driver to your ELD, you'll need to add that driver to log in as well. Go from the home screen, tap ELD eDriver Logs, and you'll find an Add Driver button at the bottom of the screen. Tap that, and you'll be returned to the login prompt. 
There, the second seat driver can enter his credentials and be logged in. From the home screen, you have several different places you can navigate to. For the purposes of this training video, we're going to focus on the four most commonly used parts of this application. Messaging, ELD eDriver logs, driver, and data file transfer for roadside inspection. First, let's navigate to messaging. Here is your messaging inbox. It looks similar to an email account where you have an inbox populating with new messages sent to the device and folders you can work with. The default view will always be inbox, but you also have a folder for saved messages, outbox, sent, and drafts. To view any message sent to the device, simply tap the target message and it will bring up the full message. You'll know who the message is from, what the subject of the message is, the date and time it was sent, and the message contents. If you would like the message to be read to you, there is a play option. Message from Rory Glavin, sent Wednesday, March 29, 2023, 9.43 a.m. You can save the message, reply to the originator, or delete the message when you no longer need it. You have four options across the bottom of the screen. The first one is how to create a new message. Tap email, choose either standard or personal, it doesn't matter. At the top, you can tap to select from a contact list. Any recipient you desire to send the message to, you can select from the list, either one or multiple. If you want your message to go to one particular individual, I want to send this message to Dane Alford, I would select him. If instead of sending it to one individual, I want to send it to whomever is covering my fleet today, you would want to send that message to ICC Dispatch. That's helpful to know for after hours and weekend support. Once you've selected your recipient, simply tap the body of the message for your virtual keyboard to appear. Type your message. Note that if I leave my keyboard up, I can't see where to navigate to next. You must collapse your keyboard so that you can see all of your options. I can send, save to drafts, or cancel sending my message. Let's go ahead and send this message off. Now or later is an option that it presents you with. I would always encourage you to send them now so you get a response more quickly. Notice that that message now exists in my sent folder. The next button over is the form message directory. Similar to macros, form messages are pre-constructed messages where you select the message you want to send and simply fill in the blanks. Let's take a look. In the form messages directory, you have a bunch of messages available for you to choose from. Simply select the message you want to send and fill out the appropriate fields. This first message is to commit to a pre-plan sent to the driver. Tap the first field to either commit yes or no to the pre-plan. It will ask you for the load number you're committing to. If you aren't able to commit to the pre-plan for any reason, simply type in the space provided. Let's talk about a practical application for using form messages. When you're under a load and you've arrived at the shipper, you want to notify dispatch. So let's go to your tablet. From your messaging inbox, tap Form. Locate your Arrived at Shipper button. There's nothing to fill out here. All you need to do is tap Send, and that alerts your driver manager that you've arrived at the shipper. Once you've received your load and your paperwork and you're ready to leave the shipper, you want to notify dispatch with a loaded call. Again, from your messaging inbox, tap Form, locate your loaded call, and fill in the appropriate blanks. You'll need to enter a bill of lading number. You'll need to enter the weight off of the bill of lading. You'll need to enter the pieces. the seal number. It gives you an opportunity to tell your driver manager your estimated time of arrival, date and time. Simply tap the field and pick from a calendar when you can arrive and the time associated. What trailer did you drop at the shipper?
And what is your loaded outbound trailer? PTA date and time are two very important pieces of information we use to plan you accurately here at Chima Freight Lines. Let's talk about PTA. PTA, similar to ETA, stands for Projected Time of Availability. Your ETA tells your driver manager when you can be to your target destination. If my ETA to Phoenix, Arizona is noon tomorrow, that would be my ETA. My PTA would reflect when I'm ready for my next load after I get there. So I have to answer a few questions in my mind. How long will it take to deliver? Do I need to take a 10 hour break or a 34 hour reset once I get there? Am I going home in Phoenix, Arizona? When will I be ready for my next load? The answer to that is what you would fill out for your PTA. Let's look at that on the loaded call. To fill out my PTA, simply tap PTA date and PTA time. Then once you've filled all these fields out, tap send and you've informed your driver manager. Sticking with the example, now we've reached our destination. We've arrived at the consignee. Let's send our arrival call. Let's head back to the tablet for that. From your messaging inbox, tap form. Locate your arrived at consignee message. There's nothing to fill out. Simply hit send to alert your driver manager. Once you've completed delivery, you'll want to notify your driver manager again. From your messaging inbox, tap form. Empty call reply. And like with your loaded call, you'll want to tap to fill out the fields, the order number. The trailer you delivered. The trailer you picked up. If you had to be involved in offloading the equipment, you can inform dispatch there and your fuel level. Those are optional fields. Once you've filled out at least that much, tap send. This handout is made available in driver orientation. If you ever misplace one or need another copy, ask any one of our driver services team member. This handout will show you what form messages are available in the forms directory and when it's appropriate to send each one. Now let's take a look at the ELD eDriver logs. Back on the tablet, from the home screen, it's the next app over, ELD eDriver logs. Let's take a look at this screen. At the top, you'll have the logged in user's name. You'll also have the current duty status and the date and time you started that duty status. Below that, it will tell you when you gain time back, and you'll notice a little circle with a triangle in it. Tap that to expand more countdown clocks including remaining drive time, work shift rest break countdown clock, work shift duty, and cycle duty summary from 70 hours counting down. To collapse that information, simply tap the circle again. The buttons across the bottom from left to right are as follows. Status allows you to change your duty status from what you're currently at to another duty status of your choice. On duty as the driver, on duty as not the driver, sleeper berth, on duty yard move, off duty PC, off duty or off and sign out of the device altogether. The next button over is options. The options panel when opened gives you the option to do several things. We never want to change the unit number so I would encourage you to leave that top option alone but if you ever need to request logs you can do so by tapping the next field down. Pre and post shift is if you want to add time before your shift began or add time after your shift concluded. Take exception, diagnostics, cycle duty summary, and roadside inspection are also available in the options panel. One place I like to go is cycle duty summary. From here, you can see a view of all of your hours used in the last eight days, seven previous including today. Today's date will be found the far right and each previous day to the left of that. Commonly people will look here to find out what hours they're dropping off at midnight and rolling over the next day. Back to the ELD eDriver home screen. If you need to log in a second seat driver, for example, for a team application, you would hit the add driver button and then you would be returned to the login prompt. Data file transfer allows you to send your hours of service to law enforcement upon request. To work with shipments and trailers, there's a shipments button and a trailers button. They look identical. 
to manage shipments, simply tap to enter shipment ID, which would be your order number. When you hit enter, it will populate to your list of current shipments, and there it will stay until you've selected it and removed it. Shipments and trailers function the same way. If I tap trailers, this card looks identical, except instead of saying manage shipments, it now says manage trailers. Tap to enter the trailer you're using for the day. Again, it will populate to your list of current trailers. Until you've selected it and are no longer using it, you want to remove it from your ELD. You'll notice also that when there is no shipment or no trailer listed on your ELD, there will be a red icon indicating there's no shipment for the folder or no trailer for the trailer icon. When you've populated it, you'll notice that that trailer disappears. The next button over is another view of your hours. Tap logs to get the virtual log graph. You can either look at it in a graph format or you can tap the events button to see a punch by punch listing of every event during that calendar day, which you'll see listed here at the top left of the screen. Again, the grid view and the events view are two different ways to look at the same data for the respective date that you see in the upper left. When you're in any on-duty status, you'll notice there's a rest break button that's available in the upper right hand corner. This button is a shortcut to any off-duty status. Simply tap the button to put yourself in a rest break. The rest break button turns into a stop break button, so when you're ready to return to work and end your break, tap the stop break button. It will invite you to choose your duty status. Whether you go off duty by using the rest break button or by going to the status button and choosing off or sleeper berth, it works the same. Let's talk log edits. You as the driver are responsible for the accuracy of your hours of service. You also have the power to edit your logs. The one and only thing that you as the driver cannot edit is automated drive time. That's drive time indicated and initiated by the throttle in the truck. If you ever do need to make a log edit, the good news is, the good news is you have the power to do that. And here I am to show you how. Let's take another look at this device. I'm ready to start my shift today, but look, I've got a problem. My ELD is telling me I'm out of drive time. Well, I know that shouldn't be the case, so let's do a little bit of investigation. Let's look at our logs. And it looks like I have an on-duty status continuing from the previous day. If I arrow over, I can see some issues from the previous day. Let's take a look at yesterday's log together. I started the day off duty, and at 7 o'clock, I came on duty to do my pre-trip inspection and prepare for the day. At 7.30, I began my drive shift until 2 o'clock when I took a 30-minute off-duty break. At 2.30, I resumed driving, and at 5 o'clock, I was done with my driving. I did my post-trip inspection, but look, I left myself on duty all night long when I should have put myself off duty or in sleeper berth. It's a simple problem to fix. Simply add the punch that you're missing. I would have been off duty at 5.30, so I'll hit the add button to create a punch. Here is a card that you'll be filling out similar to a form message to create the events of the punch you wish to create. The event you will tap to add. It's a status change. We need to go either off duty or sleeper berth. Let's just pick off duty. What time did that shift start? Well, we can navigate to 5.30. Minutes and seconds are required and make sure AM and PM is set correctly and hit OK. Where was that off-duty duty status taken? We were in Weed, California. What was the truck number? It's a drop-down selector, and it should have your truck there to populate, 24455. And it's going to ask you for a reason for the change. Forgot to log off-duty. Hit save, and now check your work. That line that continued into midnight and the next day beyond is now set at 5.30, off duty. And if we go back to our ELD eDriver home screen, instead of having zero available drive hours, we now have eight. Let's talk personal conveyance. One of the duty status options available to you is off duty PC, which stands for personal conveyance. 
Chima Freight Lines allows you to use the truck to run personal errands as long as you meet the following criteria. It must be not intentionally to advance a load. It must be for personal use only. Chima Freight Lines company policy is that you limit personal conveyance to a maximum of 50 miles per day. And lastly, you want to make sure you log it before you move the truck to keep your brake protected. Let me show you how to log it. From the PeopleNet home screen, ELD eDriver logs. Tap the status button, find off-duty PC, and enter a brief description of what you're doing. You'll notice that you now have an end PC button. When you're done with your personal errand, tap end PC, add a note, and hit submit. It'll ask you what duty status you want to go back to. Off-duty would be appropriate. So far we've looked at a few things on the home screen. We've looked at messaging, we've looked at the ELD eDriver logs. Let's move on to the driver application. This is the driver application. You'll go to the driver application anytime you want to send in a DVIR. Right here has got its own sub menu for inspections. It's going to ask you information about the inspection, whether it's a pre-trip or post-trip inspection that you just completed, whether it was new or existing, whether it was a pre, inter, post, or DOT. And then a form message will come up, the DVIR, for you to answer questions about the pre-trip inspection or post-trip inspection you just completed. Another significant app in the home screen is the one for data file transfer or roadside. Let's take a look together. Should law enforcement pull you over and ask for your ELD hours, you'll need to navigate to the data file transfer, sometimes called roadside application. From this application, you can submit your hours via email or web service, however requested by law enforcement. If law enforcement requests to see your tablet, they can be removed from the truck. There are two pivot points on the back of each of these displays. For the PD-5, simply loosen the butterfly collar. While it's hanging there, unscrew the two cable pins. This connector will remove from the port, finish loosening the collar, and the tablet will go with you. It has a battery life, and as long as it's got good charge, you can hand it to law enforcement. When they're done, they can return it to you. And again, you'll want to return it the way you found it. Back on the mount, tighten the butterfly screw, and return the cable back to the back of the tablet. If you're ever going to be away from the truck for any period of time where the truck could be moved by somebody else, another driver, somebody with Chima Freight Lines, or somebody from a dealership shop, you'll always want to make sure to log out of the device. Here's how you log out. From the home screen, ELD eDriver logs. Locate your status button, tap that, and the button off sign out. Make sure not to key your truck off or disconnect the battery disconnect switch until it's done exiting. You'll know you're done once it returns you to the login prompt. For questions about log edits or additional hours of service information, contact anybody on our safety team at 253-733-5718, option 3. For additional training, contact driver services also at 253-733-5718, option 4. PeopleNet also offers support 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. They can be reached at 888-346-3486. Make sure you have our company ID ready, which is 3890. Thank you.